get a £5 free bet every week with Offer Club from William Hill. Simply stake a total of £20 or more across the week on pre-match football accumulators with four or more selections and you'll get a £5 free bet on the Friday. Join William Hill Offer Club on mobile or online now. Closing Cassius Sunday? Nah. You don't know it, do you? Nah, I'm going to keep you professional. Yeah? I'm going to talk. You are professional. Very, very elegantly. Yeah. So now I can say, why is he trying to be a gangster? Right. I'm gonna let's do a very professional oh. articulate interview. Kogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin Jim Mark. Uh, we're at the Anthony Joshua versus Eric Molina press conference. I'm joined by Anthony Joshua. How are you, Anthony? Very well, thank you, Kogan. And yourself? Very well. Uh, how did you think the press conference went today? Splendid. I think that Eric Molina presented himself very well um, as a as a competitive challenger, and I feel that. I heard his story and what he's here to do and what he's trying to achieve and I respect that. So I have to make sure I get back into camp on Monday and up the ante a little bit and try and stop his dreams and shatter his dreams from taking what I'm working for and what I'm working towards in the future. What do you make of Molina as an opponent? Eddie Owen said that it will probably be your toughest test to date. Um, do you well, agree with that? I think we've got two ends of the spectrum. I think one of the ends of the spectrum is that Nothing can compare from a mega fight with Klitschko at the end of the day. I was signed and sealed and unfortunately got injured. So anyone below Klitschko is a bit of a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Kugan? A step down? A step down. Anyone from Klitschko probably is a step down in the eyes of people. Then we go back to the fact that Eric Molina, he may not be a household name and well-recognised in Great Britain, but for a developing fight and of his recent performances, and at the stage when the current WBC champion boxed him and the current IBF champion boxes him at 18 fights, I think it's a great learning fight for myself. So I think that Klitschko, we step down, a household name people aren't going to be happy with because they love that Derek Chisora and Dylan White-esque, you know, but sometimes you've got to strip the hype away and focus on what's right for the fighter and this is a perfect development fight in my opinion. I know in the press conference you didn't really want to talk about Klitschko because you've got Molina uh, on the 10th of December but was it a frustrating period because it went on for about three weeks where is the fight on, is it not happening, uh, the belt situation, uh, how did you get your head around that whole situation? I was very confident the fight was going to happen, you know, as the conversations revealed themselves behind the scenes, we was leading towards a December the 10th crash in Manchester and Klitschko was very interested in that opportunity as well and then as things happen in sports he, he came up with an injury and he said that he's still very keen so he decided to uh, postpone the fight and he would like to compete God willing I get through what's in front of me compete sometime in April so um, yeah I had to get back to the drawing board and continue my training and instead of fighting Klitschko Eric Molina has taken his place who is, who is the next I think it's our price in uh, Molina is Molina ranked higher why didn't you choose Price how come is Molina ranked higher than Price in IBF don't quote me on the rankings. Where he is, yeah. So, okay. so it's a better opponent. But Eddie said that David Price was an opponent and your team didn't feel like would go many rounds. Um, no, no. Just Eric Molina is a better opponent. You know, and he's had better outings recently, really. And that's what it came down to. Um, yeah, and a few weeks ago, it was like, Price isn't even... No, I'm not going to... But yeah, that is it. Eric Molina is a better ranked opponent and he's had better outings. So... That's, a, that, that's an easy decision, it's a better fight for myself, so I don't see where there's any wrongdoing in choosing a tougher fight. Um, he sent you a tweet, David Price, actually, saying a few weeks ago when this was all coming to light, um, that he was going to come and knock you out in the 10th like he did before. And unfortunately, he's got to sit in his armchair and watch, <laughs> so tweets are irrelevant. Can you make any comment on this, this sparring rumour that, that's floated about, about nah, David Price? You know, I think like, there's enough sparring rumours, like, I've, I've knocked people out in sparring, everyone, like, I'm not here to entertain people's egos and stuff like that. So, you know, everyone that's stepped in the ring and, and tried to learn their craft and, you know, been knocked down and got back up, credit to them. So I would rather learn my trade behind closed doors than learn it under the bright lights. So unfortunately, someone like Price has had to learn his mistakes under the bright lights and I've cracked on, followed my path and now I'm here, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't like to talk on other people's experiences because who knows, they could be clucking at my heels in the future through what they went through when they was in the room with me. You know, they could be building a stronger resilience and, and coming after me now. So, yeah, I'm not here to talk about what happened in the past. 
look at what happened with Dylan. He beat me as an amateur, I beat him as a pro. So can't really talk about all these past, past, past things. It's, that's all hype. I don't really, but you know me, I'm not really buying into all the hype. There was also talk of a potential fight with Huey Fury. Uh, yeah, for this four or five well. times. Yeah, is that a fight that we could potentially see for ask next year? Ask Huey. Ask him himself. Don't ask Peter. Ask Huey. He's the fighter, isn't he? So you have to ask Huey. Does he genuinely want the fight? And if he does, what does he want? But is that a fight that appeals to you? It's appealed to me many a times, um, and it's been a it's been a fight that we've approached many a times. As I said, I could talk about exactly what happens, but it's just it's just hearsay at the end of the day. You know, I've, we've offered Huey and his team the fight and it didn't happen. So, you know, but it is, it is Eric Molina uh, yeah. on the team. Yeah. Um, we speak about this a lot, about yeah. people giving you rounds. And it's something that your team probably want, uh, but you've only been seven rounds twice in your career. Yeah. Um, you Lucky believe Molina seven. could be the one that maybe takes it further than that? Hopefully not for you. I don't know. I don't know. Make sure you watch it. I don't know, man. I don't care either if it goes 12 rounds or one round. I don't care. Fight to fight? <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, I just got to dismantle my opponent one way or another. So. How did you make of him in the press conference, sir? Very, very respectful. Very respectful. Um, he presented himself well. He gave a bit of an insight to the people who didn't know much about himself and told like where he's come from, you know. Um, the issues he f fought, faced when he was competing with Wilder in the training camp and what he's learned from that and the changes he's made to be a better fighter today and what he's learned in those fights has made him a better person now so I should be facing a better Molina and if I can make the better Molina if I can beat him easier than they did then that should hold me in good stead moving forward in like the eyes of the public you know what I'm saying I don't know what you're saying yeah just um, you talk to me. What have you? What are your opinions of the state of um, the heavyweight division and you know December tenth and uh, Honestly, moving forward? Yeah, it's a bit of a mess. Why is that? Because there's loads of potential fights that could be happening that haven't happened, which doesn't mean to say it won't happen for next year. Give me a few, real up a few, and then maybe we can talk about it. Well, the fact that we didn't have Fury and Klitschko this year, and the fact that we didn't have okay, you against Klitschko this year. Let's talk about why is these things happen. Fury because of the issues he had, yeah. um, which is a, which seems to me is a, a drug a drug issue, right? Yeah. So it wasn't a thing where they've dodged each other. No. Me and Fury. But for whatever reason, they're not. Yeah. They so it's, happened. No, it's not. It's not really a mess. So in the sense of um, the whole WBA situation is a mess. Wait, 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 wait. And then me and Fury, he had, he got an injury. Yeah. Me and Klitschko, he had an injury, so yeah. he's postponed. So that's not really a mess. That's just something that happens in sports. And then the WA situation, they've sanctioned they have Lucas now, Brown yeah. and uh, Shannon Briggs for the WBA regular. Correct. That's a fight that's going to happen. They sanctioned Andy Joshua versus Klitschko for the WBA. Correct. That's a fight that's going to happen. So I think that it's moving steady. It will be. Or do you want everything to happen today? No, not today, but 2017, potentially, it could be a great year for exactly. the heavyweight so let's, let's But I'm talking about potential. now. I'm talking yeah, about no, today. I'm talking listen, about the day. This, is, this is forever beyond us. You know, so the good thing about life is that time is something that no man can overcome. So that time will come. So just enjoy it. Enjoy it for what it is. Let's watch Lucas Brown. Let's watch Ortiz. Let's watch these guys. And all these stuff that we call a mess, they're going to clear themselves up with good time. But they are going to happen. It's no one's dodging anyone. It's just due to circumstances. I'm not saying people are dodging people. It's probably, a mess is probably yeah, a little bit harsh, like, but yeah. it's a bit, it's very complicated. I know, I know. And there's a lot of politics going yeah. on. That's all, that's all but, I'm going to say. But they have been resolved though. They have been resolved. Like the Lucas Brown yeah. situation and the Klitschko situation. Like Klitschko would have been here sitting with us right now, but he got injured. Do you know what I mean? And, and then we've just postponed it. It's not, the fight is still actually going to happen if I get through December 10th. So I think that we're, we're definitely moving in a good, we're, move, we're moving forward for sure, we're moving forward. Just a couple of quick things. Luis Ortiz is now signed with Metrum. Um, is the idea behind that to set up a, a fight I, between I, you I two think, for next I year? I think like for Eddie, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. But I think that if I get myself um, past Klitschko and I, and I gain that WBA belt, if you look through the rankings, I think he's, uh, he's up there. So yeah, providing like, I think, I don't even know what's happening with Joseph Parker anymore. Andy Ruiz. So what like, happens with that then? Looking like the 10th of December. So if they fight, is he still my mandatory? No. So 
No, that's what I'm saying. That's due to circumstances that he, he no. took himself. So I think your next mandatory for the IBF is Pulev. Is Pulev. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So unless there's a little unification, I, I don't know. So yeah. It's Which very is interesting. Klitschko. It's Which not a mess. It's very interesting. Yeah, so what would you prefer then? Klitschko or Pulev? Klitschko. Yeah. So there's your answer. I want your next opponents to be Klitschko, Wilder, Why don't we just Fury, do it one night and then Payne. you're happy? Then you cover everything. It's then you not can me. have a year I'm talking for like the voice of the people, aren't I? <laughs> no, 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 are you the voice of the people? Apparently so. Are you the voice of the people? You just slipped there. You wanted to talk eloquently, now you just slipped. <laughs> You're not the voice of the people. Last thing. You crap I am. Up. I'm the voice of the people. Last thing. Yeah. Um, Tyson Fury, what have you just made of that whole situation that's involved? Mate, Tyson Fury is quite disrespectful towards me, but I'm not going to fall into that category. So, Tyson. You know, keep on enjoying yourself. I don't know how you're living or what you're up to, but it'll be great to see him back in the ring soon and make headlines for what he's good at. Okay, it's quite respectful. And i.e. the same with Hugh Fury. It'll be good to see him back in the ring and if it's a competition that he would like to take up upon himself, um, it'll be something that we're interested in, no problem. All right, Anthony Joshua, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Bam, peace. You, you break that camera, <laughs> that's coming out of your eight million, you're <laughs> <laughs>